Stephen, everybody knows what mathematics is, but what most people don't realize is that when mathematicians or philosophers begin to talk about mathematics, they, they do it with a sense of awe and, and the wonder is whether mathematics is something that is so fundamental to, to reality that it has an eternal, necessary existence, in some, as some people say, in some platonic heaven, and it's always there. Or is it something that is a regularity that humans have sort of invented that sort of describes the world and works very well but has no deeper reality? How do we begin to take those two dramatically different positions and evaluate them? Well, I think, I think uh, I'd been interested for a long time in questions about sort of what's, what is the essence of mathematics. Um, I make my living building this <laughs> thing called Mathematica, <laughs> which uh, attempts to cover the, in the broadest possible sense the kinds of things that mathematics might encompass. Mm -hmm. Um, but so a question that I've been interested in also from the point of view of basic science is, is the mathematics that we sort of practice today the only possible mathematics, or is it a mathematics that is sort of a great artifact of our civilization, Correct. but sort of a historical accident mm -hmm. artifact? The conclusion that I've sort of resoundingly come to is that the mathematics that we have today is in fact really a historical artifact. Mm. Now that's not historically in the tradition of mathematics itself, that's not what people have tended to conclude. They've Correct. tended to think that mathematics is sort of the most general possible formal abstract system. If you look at the history of mathematics, that's certainly not how it originally started out. I mean, in ancient Babylon, you know, there was arithmetic for commerce and other things, mm -hmm. and there was geometry for land surveying. Mm -hmm. And you know, what, what I think has really been the history of mathematics is the progressive generalization of arithmetic and geometry, mm -hmm. plus one key methodological idea. And the key methodological idea is the idea that one can make theorems and abstract proofs of those theorems. And I think that methodology is kind of what's driven the development of mathematics. Yes. Mathematics has been the set of things about which one can reasonably make theorems. Now, inevitably, that has sort of limited the kinds of generalizations that are possible in mathematics because, in a sense, when one generalizes from the integers to the real numbers to the complex numbers to the quaternions, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, one is doing that typically at every step saying, let's figure out some theorem that we really like, and let's then find the most general kind of thing that satisfies that type of theorem. So in a sense, one is, one is always keeping very close to this thing where certain theorems will be true and will be provable. Now, one of the things that, that comes about, one can ask the question, if one just sort of arbitrarily looks at formal systems, will they tend to have the character of mathematics as we know it today? Will they tend to have the feature that most of the things one asks about, one can successfully prove theorems about. I think in both cases, the answer is no, not really. So, for example, one thing one can do is to kind of ultimately deconstruct mathematics. If one looks at, you know, there are maybe three million papers that have been published about mathematics, okay? And these are all based on a certain set of axioms. The sort of the, the, the axioms are what you grow mathematics from. The axioms are quite simple. You know, there are a couple of pages. You can give sort of all of the axioms that are commonly in use in mathematics. Um, and so the question is then, is, is that, um, uh, are those the only possible axioms, or can one sort of look at other possible axioms? So one thing one can do, each of these axioms is represented by some sequence of symbols you can write down on the page. You can just enumerate all possible such sequences mm. of symbols, and one can ask, what's true about these other kinds of axioms? These are sort of a universe of possible mathematicses. Our particular mathematics is the particular set of axioms you can write down on these couple of pages, but there's a whole universe of possible mathematics out there. What are they like? First question might be, where does our particular mathematics lie in this universe of possible mathematics? Is it possible mathematics number one? Is it possible mathematics number 10? Is it possible mathematics mm -hmm. number a quintillion? Where does it lie? I was curious about this question for logic, for example. You know, we always think of logic as being this very absolute thing. Mm -hmm. But in fact, it's just a particular axiom system that lives in the space of all possible axiom systems, space of all possible formal systems. And so I, I asked this question, where, where is it in that space? The answer is, depends on exactly how you enumerate the space, sure. but roughly it's about the 50,000th possible axiom <laughs> system. So mm -hmm. right there, sort of in the universe of possible axiom systems, the universe of possible mathematics is, there's logic. But wouldn't it happen that all of the others are, are self-contradictory in some way? No. 
No, many of the, the others, all of the others are perfectly valid axiom systems on which you could start building a mathematics. Now, some of them will have, uh, the, the, they will have features that, some of them are, are less rich than our mathematics. Logic itself is much less rich than set theory mm -hmm. or uh, the, the formal th theories of arithmetic. Um, but logic has had quite a good run for its, uh, for its little mm -hmm. axiom system. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, these other possible mathematics, is, um, as you look at them, it's an interesting question. Can you recognize which one could be, you know, is there something special about our particular mathematics? Okay. I don't think so. I think if, you know, if the aliens delivered, you know, a different possible mathematics, um, you know, I don't think we would be able to immediately say that's not a, a reasonable, valid mathematics. Because it would be self-consistent, even though it would be radically different. Yes, the, the issue of, so, so we can talk also about things like Gödel's theorem, and we can ask the question, what, um, uh, see, what, one of the things that happens in these, in these axiom systems is we can ask, um, can we, from an axiom system, can we figure out what's true based on that axiom system? Uh -huh. So, in a sense, the most fundamental fact about mathematics is that it's hard. <laughs> it might be the case that given an axiom system, we could immediately deduce what all the consequences of that axiom system would be. But there's this sort of very fundamental fact that I call computational irreducibility that kind of makes it the case that from a particular axiom system or from a particular set of rules, there's a certain irreducible difficulty in working out what the consequences of those rules should be. Same thing with axiom systems. That's, that's sort of the, the most fundamental fact about mathematics is there's sort of an irreducible difficulty in figuring out from the axiom systems what are the true facts of that, of that area of mathematics. Um, this is something, and so the, the, uh, uh, th this has the consequence that um, there, are, there are facts. Given an axiom system, there will be things that are undecidable from that axiom system that are, in a sense, infinitely far away from the axiom mm -hmm. system, infinitely difficult to determine. Um, there's a certain raft of technicalities associated with this, okay? <laughs> but um, the, uh, um, you know, one of the fundamental questions is um, when we see that there are, if we look at the history of mathematics, Mathematics has had all these unsolved problems, things like Fermat's last theorem, the Riemann hypothesis, things like this. There's a question. Are these things not solved because they, we just haven't developed the mathematical technology to be able to solve them, or are they fundamentally unsolvable? Now, what's happened in the history of mathematics is that most things people have been interested in have ended up being eventually solvable, although sometimes mm -hmm. with, with effort and centuries of work <laughs> and so on. Um, but one of the things that I suspect is that that's actually not really the way that is the true, the true reality to mathematics. That really, if we were to just sort of ask mathematical questions arbitrarily, that the vast majority of them would end up turning out to be unsolvable. Mm -hmm. And in fact, that unsolvability is actually very close at hand in mathematics. We just don't see it because the particular way that mathematics has progressed historically has tended to avoid it. Now, you might say, but mathematics is a good model of the natural world, mm -hmm. and mathematics has been sort of driven by modeling the natural world. I think there's kind of a circular argument, because what's happened is that those things which have been successfully addressed in science and studying the natural world are just those things that methods like mathematics have successfully allowed us to address. And so this idea that sort of mathematics has been wonderfully successful in modeling the natural world, and so that's all mm -hmm. we need to think about in mathematics is, is what we need to model the natural world, it's been constrained by the fact that these are the particular methods we've used, they've worked in particular ways, and so on. I think that, in fact, a lot of the things that we see in the natural world that we haven't been successfully able to model with mathematics, they're really the things that are associated with those parts of mathematics that we've never reached historically. Um, partly they're the other mathematicses that haven't been the ones that were developed historically. Partly they're questions, even in our existing mathematics, that we haven't chosen to ask because they're not things that have arisen historically. So I think one of the exciting things that, that one realizes is that human mathematics, as is, it's one of the great artifacts of our civilization. It's one of the, uh, it's one of the sort of the, 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 the perfect, wonderful <laughs> things that's been produced by a huge amount of human effort. But um, it's an but, artifact. But it's an artifact. And there is much more out there in the sort of space of all possible mathematicses. And uh, I think in, in the, the future, um, we will see an increasing kind of realization and an increasing ability to explore all that, all that other universe of mathematics is. And it will be profoundly important for not only for our mathematics, but for our science and for our technology.